Hello and welcome to my YouTube presentation entitled What Caused the Serb Exodus from Croatia During Operation Storm? My name is Luka Mišetić. I am an attorney in New York. Um, I spent seven years uh, before the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia as defense counsel in the case of General Ante Gotovina, which dealt extensively with Operation Storm. So I have spent uh, many years looking at the evidence in the case. Uh, at the end of this presentation, hopefully you will have learned um, three important things about Operation Storm. The first is what caused the Serb exodus from, uh, from Croatia during Operation Storm, which is the title of the presentation. The second important thing is that you will learn the critical role that General Ante Gotovina played in Croatia's victory in Operation Storm. And the third thing that you will uh, hopefully learn is the importance of a uh, little village in the southern part of Croatia known as Otric and the importance that that village played in Croatia's victory in Operation Storm and uh, in the departure of Kraina Serb civilians and military from Croatia during Operation Storm. As I record this, it is August of 2020, and we are approaching the 25th anniversary of Operation Storm, which took place between 4 August and 8 August 1995. Every year around this time, tensions rise between Croatia and Serbia over the anniversary of Operation Storm. There are competing narratives between the two countries about the operation. Operation Storm is celebrated in Croatia because it liberated 10,400 square kilometers or 4,000 square miles of Croatia's territory that had been occupied by rebel Serb forces for more than four years. The territory liberated in Operation Storm accounted for almost one-fifth of Croatia's overall territory. Croatia celebrates the anniversary of Operation Storm every year on the 5th of August as a national holiday. In Croatia, it is known as Victory Day and the Day of Homeland Thanksgiving. In Serbia, the anniversary of Operation Storm is a day of national mourning. The Serbian view of Operation Storm is that it is the biggest ethnic cleansing in modern Europe with the claim that hundreds of thousands of Serbs were expelled from Croatia by Croatian authorities in 1995. It is true that many Serbs left Croatia during Operation Storm. And these are some of the images um, of that departure. Many civilians packed up and left and uh, exited Croatia in long columns that took several days, leaving for um, the Serb-occupied territory in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, known as Republika Srpska, or going on to um, Serbia itself. But the key question that has to be asked is why did the Serbs leave during Operation Storm? The issues and questions are, were they forcibly expelled by Croatia or were they encouraged to leave by their own Serb leadership, which caused a panic among the civilian population and a mass, mass exodus? These fundamentally contradictory historical narratives are at the center of the dispute between Serbia and Croatia, which arises every year in August during the anniversary of Operation Storm. In this video, I will explain the true reasons that caused the Serb population to leave Croatia in 1995. I want to spend just a few minutes on some basic background information prior to getting to Operation Storm itself, um, in case we have viewers who are not as familiar as many of the rest of us are about the events between 1991 and 1995 in Croatia. So, um, by the conclusion of the hostilities in 1991, Serb rebels occupied much of Croatia's territory. And you can see it 
here on this slide. It is the um, reddish color territory here in the middle of Croatia that goes almost to the coast by Zadar and here in the eastern part of Croatia, which is known as Eastern Slavonia. This was the status of Croatia's occupied territory from the end of 1991, basically until roughly the middle of 1995. At the end of the hostilities in 1991, the United Nations, uh, the, the parties reached agreement on a peacekeeping force to enter into these um, territories, which Croatia viewed as occupied territories. Um, the UN peacekeeping force was known as UNPROFOR, and it entered Croatia in 1992 with a mandate to reintegrate the occupied territories into the Croatian constitutional order. The UNPROFOR zones uh, were broken up into four separate sectors, which will be relevant uh, later on in my presentation. Um, sector East, which isn't uh, part of the, our discussion today because it wasn't part of Operation Storm. Sector West, which was known as Western Slavonia, and which, um, as I will explain in a few minutes, was taken back by Croatia prior to Operation Storm, three months prior. Uh, in an operation known as Operation Flash in May 1995. And then two UN sectors here, Sector North and Sector South, uh, which uh, were the areas uh, that Operation Storm affected in August 1995 and which Croatia took back uh, in Operation Storm. In 1992, the war in Bosnia started. Um, Serb forces seized control of almost 70% of Bosnian territory. And you can see that um, highlighted in blue here uh, in the middle in this map of um, Bosnia and Herzegovina. By 1993, this was the uh, mil military and political situation in both Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. The green areas are areas controlled by the army of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina in the middle and uh, here in the upper left hand um, portion of Bosnia and Herzegovina known as the Bihać pocket. The orange parts in Bosnia were controlled by the um, Croatian Defense Council. And then uh, you see the status of the situation in Croatia, which is um, identical to what it was on the slide I previously showed you. The situation in the Bihać pocket, um, which will be, uh, again, important to understanding Operation Storm and why it took place. Um, the Bihać pocket is in the uh, northwest corner of Bosnia and Herzegovina. In 1993, it was on one side surrounded by the uh, rebel Serbs from the so-called Republic of Serbia and Krajina. On the um, eastern side, it was surrounded by um, the uh, rebel Serbs in Bosnia and Herzegovina, known as the Republika Srpska. And within the Bihać pocket, there were um, hostilities between two different Bosniak groups. One in the green is the legitimate government of um, Bosnia and Herzegovina. And the highlighted blue area is uh, a breakaway um, uh, entity uh, that was headed by a um, man named Fikret Abdic, who was fighting against the legitimate government of Bosnia and Herzegovina and who had aligned himself with the Serb forces. So in effect, um, the blue area was also uh, in union or in alliance with um, the Republic of Serbia and Krajina and the Republika Srpska, fighting against the legitimate forces of uh, the Bosnian government in the Bihać pocket. This will become very important later because, as you will see in the left-hand corner here, Croatian territory uh, bordered the Republic of Serbia and Krajina, and 
uh, as Serb forces in 1995 attacked the Bihać pocket, Croatia became concerned that the elimination of the Bihać pocket here would result in a contiguous Serbian territory that went from the Republica, Republic of Serbian Krajina to through the Republika Srpska and to Serbia, which would have made it extremely difficult for Croatia to recover its occupied territory in the so-called Krajina. Now, although um, the Serb territories were divided in three so-called republics, which again would be the uh, Republic of Serbian Krajina, the Republika Srpska, and Serbia itself, which was then uh, within the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Um, all three Serbian entities and leaders acted in a, a coordinated fashion militarily. Bosnia and Croatia were militarily one battlefield, although separate countries. And that is um, extremely important to understand. Yes, there was a war in Croatia, and yes, there was a war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but the Serb uh, leadership treated those um, two countries as one battlefield. And that will, will be important uh, for Operation Storm because you will see that Operation Storm took place not only in Croatia, but more importantly from Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, from which the main uh, focus of Croatian uh, attack came. So between 1992 and 1995, um, although the parties were supposed to be working on the peaceful reintegration of uh, the so-called Krajina into the Croatian constitutional order, rebel Serb leaders rejected all, all peace plans for four years, including plans proposed by the United States, Russia, and the European Union, offering Serbs their own autonomous entity in Croatia with its own parliament, and its own separate currency, uh, its own police force even. Uh, this plan was known as Z4, uh, but they rejected even that, um, that plan, which offered uh, exceptional autonomy uh, to the Serb minority in Croatia, because they refused even to accept the principle that this territory should be reintegrated into the Croatian constitutional order. And with that background information, um, I'd like to now discuss uh, the chronology of events that led up to Operation Storm. Um, you cannot understand the events of Operation Storm without understanding the events that led up to it. On the 1st of May, 1995, Croatia launches Operation Flash to re retake Western Slavonia, also known as UN Sector West. And I pointed that out to you in the earlier slide. That is the orange area um, on this slide. And this is the area captured by Croatian forces in Operation Flash uh, in Sector West. This took place three months uh, prior to Operation Storm. So the events of Operation Flash were very much still fresh in the minds of all actors um, in Operation Storm, both on the Croatian and the Serbian side, as well as uh, in the international community. Croatia conducted the military operation in Western Slavonia uh, with full respect for the laws of war and for the rights of uh, the Serbs who were in Western Slavonia. And this was confirmed by the United Nations, uh, which itself, in, um, through its special rapporteur for human rights, Tadeusz Mazowiecki, praised Croatia's treatment of Serb civilians in Western Slavonia. Human Rights Watch reviewed Croatia's actions in Operation Flash and concluded that, quote, in general, the operation, in, the operation was professionally conducted and based on the evidence available as of June 10, violations of the rules of war appear not to have been widespread. Nevertheless, uh, despite Croatia's efforts to treat uh, its Serb minority in Western Slavonia well, many Serbs left Western Slavonia and the Serb leadership in the so-called Krajina 
insisted that Serbs could not live under Croatian control in Western Slavonia and demanded that the UN evacuate the remaining Serbs in Western Slavonia to Serb-controlled areas of Bosnia. As a result, the United Nations agreed to evacuate Serbs who wished to leave in a UN operation known as Operation Safe Passage. Now what's important about this is these evacuations of Serbs from Western Slavonia were conducted after the military operation was completed and despite the best efforts of uh, Croatian authorities to convince the Serbs who remained to stay in Western Slavonia. Operation Safe Passage was a United Nations operation to evacuate thousands of Serbs from Croatia over several weeks after Operation Flash in Western Slavonia had been completed. Serbs were interviewed and promised full rights if they stayed, but many chose to leave via the UN for Serb-controlled territory in Bosnia. The situation here is that the United Nations has been asked uh, by the local population, uh, in agreement with the Bosnian and Croatian governments, to help move civilians from this area down across the Sava Bridge to hand them over to relief agencies on the south side of the bridge. The message was given today, uh, or last night, to the local population here that we would be uh, explaining this to them here today, and the population from this area alone at the moment is coming here to this area in order to have an interview with the Croatian authorities in which they are explaining the, uh, the rights they would have as Croatian citizens. And once that has been complete, they're having an interview with the United Nations where they can speak freely and explain whether they wish to leave or not. The indications are that those people whose families are united here, uh, many of them want to stay and many of them want to leave. And I have not had the figures as to exactly what those numbers are at the moment. The Serb departure from Western Slavonia in May and June 1995 showed Croatian and UN leaders that Serbs would leave the remaining occupied areas of Croatia if Croatia launched a military operation as ultimately happened in Operation Storm in 1995. In other words, the events that happened in Operation Flash in May showed that Serb leaders would encourage Serb civilians to leave rather than stay in a Croatia uh, and in a uh, so-called Kraina, which was incorporated into the Croatian constitutional order. And this is important um, because it needs to be understood that um, everyone knew that Croatian Serbs would depart rather than, many of them, obviously not all of them, but many Croatian Serbs would depart um, rather than choose to live in an independent Croatia. Now, in July 1995, Serb forces in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia began to commence military operations to consolidate their territory in advance of anticipated peace negotiations and the negotiated settlement of the wars in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. So, between the 6th of July and the 11th of July 1995, Bosnian Serb forces attack the UN safe haven of Srebrenica. On the 11th of July, 1995, Bosnian Serb forces led by General Ratko Mladic seized and entered Srebrenica in an operation known as Krivaya. This video is of General Mladic entering his, uh, with his army into Srebrenica on the 11th of July.
Evo nas, 11. jula 1995. godine u Srpskoj Srebrenici. U oči još jednog velikog praznika srpskoga, poklanjamo srpskom narodu ovaj grad. I napokon došao je trenutak da se posle bune protiv Dakija točimo osvetimo na ovom prostoru. And in fact, General Mladic's forces did quote unquote exact revenge uh, by committing genocide between the 13th and 22nd of July 1995, when the Bosnian Serb army murdered over 8,000 Bosnian Muslim men and boys in what two UN courts would later conclude was an act of genocide. Between the 14th and the 25th of July, 1995, after taking Srebrenica, Bosnian, Bosnian Serb forces attack and seize the UN safe haven of Zepa. And meanwhile, on the 19th of July, 1995, the Croatian Serb and Bosnian Serb forces, combined with the forces of Fikret Abdic in the Bihać pocket, and I mentioned this in the earlier slide, so the areas in yellow, pink, and blue on this slide launch a coordinated attack on the forces of the 5th Corps of the Bosnian Army, which is the green area in this slide, in order to seize the Bihać pocket, which again is the territory in the northwest corner of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now this effort to take the Bihać pocket was only approximately two weeks before Operation Storm took place. The military commander of the Krajina Serb forces, General Mile Mrkšić, testified that the operation against the Bihać pocket was launched in July 1995 because, quote, the Republic, Republic of Serbian Krajina was thinnest in the stretch from Ogolin to Bihać, and you see that in the red box on your screen uh, there on the slide, and quote, the hinterland had to be assured so that you would have your back covered because it was difficult for us to hold the line that was in front of us against the Croatian army and let alone the line that faced the fifth Corps, meaning the Bosnian army. So what General Mrkšić was saying was they launched this operation to eliminate the Bihać pocket precisely because the so-called Krajina was thinnest in that area in the red box that I have highlighted there. They wanted to eliminate that green area in the red, uh, red box so that they would have a contiguous Serbian territory stretching from uh, the, uh, Croatia, going through Bosnia, through that corridor in the north of Bosnia and linking directly with Serbia. Now, Croatia precisely for that reason could not allow the Bihać pocket to fall. If Bihać fell, Serb forces would have that continual control of a unified block of territory from nearly Zagreb all the way to Serbia. The fall of Bihać would have made it extremely difficult for Croatia to recover its occupied territories. On the 22nd of July 1995, faced with the Bosnian Serb attacks to seize UN safe areas, safe areas in eastern and western Bosnia, Bosnian President Izetbegovic calls upon Croatia to intervene militarily in Bosnia to defend the Bihać pocket. The split agreement, as it is known, was signed on the 22nd of July 1995 between Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina and allowed the Croatian army to operate in the territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The agreement named Croatian General Ante Gotovina as commander of Croatian forces, which was a term meant to uh, identify the combined forces of the Croatian army and the Croatian Defense Council, which was the uh, uh, military organization of the Bosnian Croats in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And he was charged to lead operations in Bosnian territory.
three days after the split agreement was signed, between the 25th and the 28th of July 1995, Croatian forces seize the Bosnian towns of Grahovo and Glamoc from Bosnian Serb forces in an operation known as Operation Summer 95, which relieved the pressure on the Bihać pocket by forcing the Serb forces to abandon the attack on Bihać in order to defend in the south from the advancing attack of the Croatian army. And the uh, territory that was seized by General Gotovina's forces um, in Operation Summer 95 is highlighted in the red box on the slide that you see in front of you. The seizure of Bosansko Grahovo by Croatian forces was absolutely crucial to understanding what happened in Operation Storm. The capture of Bosansko Grahovo placed Knin itself in a perilous position because until that point, the main supply link between Knin and Banja Luka and Serbia ran right through Grahovo. And I have put a uh, Google map on the screen in front of you by which you can see the main road out of Knin goes to Strmica through Bosansko Grahovo, which is the area in the red box to Drvar and on to Banja Luka. After Operation Summer 95, Croatian forces under General Gotovina's command controlled that territory of Bosansko Grahovo, which, mean, which meant Knin no longer had a direct connection to uh, Bosnian Serb, um, the Bosnian Serbs and to Serbia itself. And it was now increasingly isolated. By seizing Grahovo, Croatian forces again cut off the shortest resupply route, which was the Knin, Strmica, Grahovo, Petrovac, Banja Luka road, and also seized the high ground on the Dinara mountain range above the Knin Valley. And um, you see that in a large red box that I have highlighted there. That is the uh, Dinara mountain range uh, overlooking Knin to the left. Uh, which is in a valley, and that will be uh, also important to understanding Operation Storm. After losing their main link through Grahovo to Serb-held territory in Bosnia and Serbia, the Krajina Serb leadership in Knin was left with one road to link the Republika Srpska and Serbia. The Knin, Otrich, Serb, Martin Brod, Petrovac, and Banja Luka route. As you will see shortly, this fact would later become critical to understanding why the Krajina Serbs left Croatia. And in the uh, slide I have in front of you, I have particularly highlighted the place known as Otrich, as I said at the beginning of my remarks. Um, hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you will understand the critical importance of Otrich to Croatia's victory in Operation Storm. And you see its relationship to Bosansko Grahovo, which I've also highlighted. Um, that route had been taken away, as I mentioned, and the route, uh, only route left out of Knin was that road that goes through Otrich. The Serb leadership in Krajina understood the dramatic consequences of the Croatian army's seizure of Bosansko Grahovo. On the 28th of July, 1995, the Krajina Serb response to the loss of Grahovo was uh, issued by the so-called president of the Krajina, Milan Martic, who declared a state of war and ordered curfews on the streets. Many Serbs in, Knin, uh, in the Knin area already began to pack their cars and leave the Krajina region uh, for uh, Bosnian Serb-held territory in Bosnia and for Serbia itself in anticipation of a potential Croatian attack. As I mentioned earlier, the Bosnian Serbs and the Krajina Serbs acted in a coordinated fashion. For them, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia were one military battlefield. And so with the loss of Grahovo, they needed to prepare an immediate military response. 
and therefore on the 30th of July, 1995, less than five days before Operation Storm would begin, Aratko Mladic came from Bosnia to Knin in order to prepare a joint military response by the Krajina Serbs and the Bosnian Serbs. The Serb leadership knew that with the fall of Grahovo, Knin was in danger. The following is a video of a press conference given by General Mladic in Knin on the 30th of July. Pa ja ne bi na vaše pitanje, vaše dobro i ispoljavate novinarsku redoznalost, ne bi ja na vaše pitanje odgovarao ovaj, sa punom preciznošću. Naredno vreme će da pokaže i da odgovore na vaše pitanje. Kako je trenutna situacija na grafiku današnje pratišnje? Hrvatske oružene informacije su izvršile napade i oni su ušli u Grahovo i delom u Glamoč, no ja se nadam da ćemo mi to veoma brzo povratiti kao i druge okupirane teritorije Srpske republike. On the 31st of July, the the first orders of the um, the Krajina Serb and the Bosnian Serb army are issued in response to the Croatian offensive. And the Serb strategy to defend Knin and Krajina depended, depended on General Mladic's Bosnian Serb forces mounting a counterattack against General Gotovina's forces in the area of Grahovo in order to put General Gotovina on the defensive and prevent him from attacking Krajina. And ultimately, uh, their objective was to retake Grahovo and remove the threat to Knin. And so uh, what you see in the slide now is what the um, Krajina Serbs and the Bosnian Serbs hoped to achieve, to occupy Croatian forces, uh, prevent them from turning left here and going uh, on attack uh, towards Knin, and instead having to defend themselves from an attack by General Mladic's forces uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The one practical problem that um, the Krajina and Bosnian Serbs had was that uh, the Croatian offensive in summer, uh, Operation Summer 95, had routed the Bosnian Serb forces that had been defending uh, Grahovo, and uh, those forces were essentially destroyed and could not quickly regroup. Uh, and so uh, the Serbs were not in a position to immediately uh, launch a counterattack. Because General Mladic had moved most of his offensive uh, forces to eastern Bosnia to attack the um, safe haven enclaves in Srebrenica and Zepa, he needed to now transfer those attacking forces, fuel and supplies from eastern Bosnia to western Bosnia in order to be able to launch the counterattack. And you see that on the arrow in the slide that I have in front of you, he needs to move those attacking forces from the east to the west in order to be able to mount that counterattack against General Gotovina's forces in the Grahovo uh, area. This is just a slide so showing the status of forces um, as of the 31st of July, 1995. You'll see that uh, on this blue line is where the Croatian forces are. They have uh, Grahovo and Glamoc under their control. They are facing uh, in Bosnia the second Krajina Corps of the Bosnian Serb army, which is not in a position to be able to attack uh, Grahovo. And so on that day, the 31st of July, uh, General Mladic issues an or order to move the East Bosnia Corps to the second Krajina Corps in Western Bosnia. Uh, on this slide, you can also see that Knin is being defended by the 7th Knin Corps, um, and they are positioned in a town called Strmica, uh, which I showed you on a slide before, but I will uh, show you on the next slide as well. 
Now, on the same day that General Mrkšić uh, was planning his defense of Knin, the Croatian military leadership was meeting on Brioni to discuss the strategy to retake the so-called Kaina. This is now uh, uh, the famous Brioni meeting, which has been written about extensively. Um, it was recorded both uh, on audio and a subsequent transcript of the meeting and was discussed extensively um, in the Gotovina case uh, before the War Crimes Tribunal uh, in The Hague. Now, uh, the transcript uh, is very um, important because it reveals what the um, strategy of uh, the Croatian military was as of the 31st of July, 1995. The key points discussed and agreed by Croatian military officials uh, were um, discussed at this Brioni meeting they knew that they now had the upper hand with the seizure of Graho and the threat to Knin itself, but they knew they had to act quickly for two reasons. First, they knew that the Bosnian Serbs were attempting to move forces from eastern to western Bosnia in order to counterattack General Gotovina's forces and recover Graho, which would take the advantage away from Croatia. Second, they knew that if they launched the operation and did not finish it quickly, Croatia would suffer serious diplomatic damage. And so in this first excerpt that I have on the slide, this is President Tujman speaking, and he says, we enjoy the sympathy of the United States, but to a certain extent. If, gentlemen, you will carry out the operation professionally, as you did in Western Slavonia within a few days, and that means three to four days, or a maximum of eight days, then we can count on the fact that we will not sustain any political damage, but will instead have scored political points in such a world. And Miroslav Tujman, who was the head of Croatian intelligence services, said, quote, you must take into account that if this is postponed, meaning Operation Storm, for two days, that means that they will have four or five days until the end of the operation. They will have time to transfer those forces and you will be subject to an attack over there. And that's referencing General Mladic's forces being transferred to attack General Gotovina's forces. That's their only chance to weaken the pressure on Knin. Therefore, it will be necessary to determine there will be pressure and you must count on that. So essentially, uh, both sides understood that this was a race against the clock. The key was, can Croatia complete an operation before General Mladic has an opportunity to transfer forces from Eastern Bosnia to Grahovo to launch uh, the attack on General Gotovina's forces. If one carefully reviews the Brioni transcript of 31 July 1995, you will see that the plan of attack that was agreed at that meeting was in fact not the way the attack unfolded on the 4th of August 1995. The first strategic stage of the Brioni plan consisted of seizing Ljubovo, which is the uh, area marked in the red box on the slide, placing Udbina under control, as well as an attack by the split military district and MUP's special forces from the slopes of Mount Velebit to Gračac. This first stage would not last more than two or three days and would include a breakthrough to the north and south of the Plitvice Lakes in order to remove the danger of an attack against Zagreb, Karlovac, and Sisak. This way, the so-called Kraina would be cut in half and all the vital facilities would be under control and the conditions for the second stage, which was expected to last as long as the first one, would be in place. So just so that we... Uh, have a clear understanding of what the attack, the first stage of the attack was supposed to be as discussed at Brioni. If you follow the arrow, the intent was to launch an attack that would essentially cut the so-called Kraina in two. Um, and it was thought that this would make it easier to then launch the second stage of the attack and to try to take um, additional territory uh, including an attack by General Gotovina's forces. General Gotovina's forces in the Grahova area 
were not planned to be a critical part of the initial attack, but would instead feign an attack from Grajo towards Stermitsa on the road to Knin. The plan was to introduce the 4th and 7th Guards Brigades under General Gotovina's command only in the second stage of the operation after the first two days of the operation were complete. Now, it's important to emphasize that the participants in the Brioni meeting did not discuss expelling Serbs from the so-called Krajina. Because Serbs had left Western Slavonia three months earlier, despite generally good conduct by Croatian forces, and because Serbs were already leaving Knin with the fall of Grahovo, the participants in the meeting anticipated that Serbs would leave if the operation was successful, meaning if the operation was uh, successfully recovering Croatian territory. They did not discuss forcibly expelling Serb civilians. They planned to leave escape routes so Serbs, Serb forces could have the option to flee rather than to force them to fight by leaving them no escape routes. Now, what most people do not realize is that the Krajina Serbs knew of the plan that had been agreed at Brioni. On the 3rd of August, in other words, the day before Operation Storm began, General Mladic issued the order to commence an attack on General Gotovina's forces on 5 August to retake Grahovo. This uh, offensive operation was codenamed Vagan. And um, if you read his order, the left-hand slide says uh, the first phase of the operation shall last six to eight days. During that phase, Grahovo shall be liberated and enemy forces in Grahovsko Polje and Shator Mountain destroyed, etc. And on the right hand side, you will see the slide that says the immediate readiness for the immediate readiness for defense. The attack shall commence at 5 August at 6.0600 hours. In other words, General Mladic was preparing to attack General Gotovina's forces the day after. Croatia launched Operation Storm. So on the 3rd of August, the scene was set. Serb forces were prepared for the Croatian attack. They had sent their special forces to the place where the Croatian army had planned to launch an attack to cut the Krajina in two. They were prepared to defend their front lines and to stall the Croatian attack so that the Bosnian Serbs could launch their counterattack and reclaim Grahovo. They were also aware that if they could defend for a few days, Croatia would be condemned diplomatically and would be forced to give up the operation. But on the 3rd of August, 1995, General Gotovina changed the attack plans and changed history. The Brioni participants had planned for General Gotovina's forces to be decoys during the first phase of Operation Storm. But on the 3rd of August, 1995, General Gotovina received permission directly from his Commander-in-Chief, President Franjo Tujman, to change his plan. Instead of being a decoy, and rather than wait to be attacked by Mladic's forces, General Gotovina proposed to take Knin immediately and to destroy the entire defense of the Republika Srpska Krajina by taking its capital city. President Tujman approved. General Gotovina decided to activate both the 4th and the 7th Guards Brigades and surprise attack Knin by coming not through Grahovo Strmica Knin Road, which the Krajina Serb army had defended, but instead by coming over the top of the Dinara mountain range using a gravel road. The Krajina Serb army had not put combat troops on the Dinara mountain and therefore were not prepared to mount a proper defense to such an attack. Because General Gotovina changed his plan so late in the preparation, Serb intelligence services did not have an opportunity to learn of Gotovina's plan to attack Knin immediately. General Mrkšić admitted this when he testified in the Gotovina trial 11 years ago, that he had prepared for the Croatian attack in Sector North and was not anticipating an attack from the direction of Grahovo. 
Now, General Mirkšić testified in the trial of General Gotovina in The Hague um, over 10 years ago, and he testified about the fact that he had been surprised by the attack by General Gotovina from the direction of the Dinara and Grahovo, and stated that his intelligence uh, services had had him planning for an attack coming from sector north to cut the Kraina in two, which is exactly what the um, initial Croatian plan of attack was. So uh, the first video you will see is um, General Mrkšić testifying in Serbian. Um, if you uh, wish to skip ahead to the English translation, you can go ahead and skip ahead approximately a minute and a half to two minutes in this video. Su snage rezervne, znači moje snage, koje sam ja, koje su glavnog štaba, komanta glavnog štaba, odnos komanta vrhovnog štaba, Marc, za aktivna dejstva slučaja agresije. Na pravce koji mogu biti ugroženi. I protiv desetna borba na komunikaciji s Luni Rakovice. Ne znam zašto smo mi predviđali da će Hrvatska strana imati desante neke... Ali smo se toga stranu plašili. E sad, znači ove pravce aktivnih destava usaglasi sa komandama korpusa, sa Banijskim i sa 21. Kordunaškim. Razumijem... Ovo o čemu vi govorite je, vi niste sigurni zašto ste pretpostavili da će Hrvatske snage izvršiti desant u sektoru Sjever, je li tako? Ne nigde koliko se osjećam. Ali je neko moje obaještene službe, neko im je nasilovo to. Desant. Da, ali da bi to bilo u sjeveru, u sektoru sjever, je li tako? Jes, jes, jes. Ja smatrao sam da je tu najoptimalija Hrvatska preseče, da preseče ovaj Republik Srpikajinu na Banijski, Kordunaški, od Ličkog i do Matinskog. Nisam računao na ovo što se desilo sa Grahova. And this is the English translation of General Mrkšić's testimony on the surprise attack by General Gotovina from the direction of Grahovo. It's correct. Go ahead and finish your answer, General. Yes. Yes. These reserve forces, in other words, my forces, the forces of the uh, commander of the Supreme Staff, that's to say Markish, they were there in case uh, an aggression was launched to engage in active combat along uh, uh, the axis that might possibly be threatened. And then the Slun Rakovica Road. I don't know why it was that we assumed that uh, the Croatian forces would have uh, some sort of uh, landing operations. Uh, um, we were obviously fearful of them. The axis of active um, uh, combat should be uh, coordinated with the Banya and the Kordun Corps. Uh, understood, and, and what you're talking about is uh, you're not sure why you assume that the Croatian forces would have some sort of landing operation up in Sector North, yes? <laughs> Uh, to the best of my recollection, there were none, there were no landing operations, but obviously somebody uh, fed this information to our um, intelligence services. be up in Sector North, correct? Yes, 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 yes. 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 I believe that that was the best area for Cro Croatian army to cut off the Banya and Kordun from Lika and uh, Dalmatia cause. Uh, I didn't count on what would subsequently happen with Grahovo. Now, now. It's correct. Go ahead and finish your answer, General. Yes. Yes. These reserve forces, in other words, 
my forces, the forces of the uh, commander of the Supreme Staff, that's to say Matic, they were there in case uh, an aggression was launched to engage in active combat along uh, uh, the axis that might possibly be threatened. And then the Slun Rakovica Road. I don't know why it was that we assumed that uh, the Croatian forces would have uh, some sort of uh, landing operations. Uh, um, we were ob obviously fearful of them. The axis of active um, uh, combat should be uh, coordinated with the Banya and the Kordun Corps. I understood, and, and what you're talking about is uh, you're not sure why you assume that the Croatian forces would have some sort of landing operation up in Sector North, yes? Uh, to the best of my recollection, there were none. There were no landing operations, but obviously somebody uh, fed this information to our um, intelligence services. It would be up in Sector North, correct? Yes, 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 yes. 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 I believe that that was the best area for Cro Croatian army to cut off the Banya and Kordun from Lika and uh, Dalmatia corps. Uh, I didn't count on what would subsequently happen with Grahovo. Now, so that was the status of the military planning for Operation Storm. And now we get to the beginning of Operation Storm itself and I will go through a reconstruction of the events of that day and a reconstruction of the Kraina Serb exodus um, from Croatia. Now, by the end of the first day of Operation Storm, the Croatian army had not advanced very far at all on the front lines. Um, in this slide, you will see the status of forces uh, at the end of the first day of Operation Storm. The pink area is still the territory held by the uh, Krajina Serb army. The blue arrows uh, show how far uh, the Croatian army had advanced after one day of uh, conflict. And from this map, you can see that the Krajina Serb defenses were quite good. Um, they had uh, limited Croatian advances significantly and were holding their territory well. The only um, incursions that you can really see are uh, in the south here in the Knin area, uh, here in the Velebit area of General Marikac's forces, and um, here up in the north in the Dubica area. Otherwise, the um, Serb defenses were holding uh, quite well. So if the Croatian army did not make much progress along the front lines uh, on the 4th of August, why did Serb forces and civilians leave on the evening of 4 August from the Kanin area? The key to understanding the departure of the Kaina Serbs lies in a village called Otric, and that's the village circled in yellow on the slide on your screen. The importance of Otrich uh, is that it is the last escape route out of Knin and the southern Kraina, as I had mentioned earlier. Uh, the last road went Knin, Otrich, Martin Brod, Bosanski Petrovac in Bosnia. Now, as I mentioned before, the Kraina Serb army had planned to defend Knin by defending the Grahovo Strmica Knin road, and General Mrkšić had placed uh, his combat forces um, in Strmica to wait for any eventual um, attack by General Gotovina's forces along the road coming from Bosansko Grahov. But while the Serb army was defending at Strmica, General Gotovina attacked over the Dinara Mountains in an area known as Crvena Zemlja or the Red Land. 
Because the Kaina Serb army was not anticipating an attack at Srebrenica Zemlya, they assigned a police unit to defend the main thrust of General Gotovina's attack, where he was sending two brigades. And you can see on this map, the blue is the direction of the Croatian army attack with the 4th Guards Brigade and the 7th Guards Brigade. Strmica is to the north, the yellow dot. That's where um, General Mercic has his combat troops, uh, but the Croatian attack did not come uh, over that main road. So if you look at a map uh, on the 4th of August of where the attacks were coming from, the black box on the right uh, is the attack of General Gotovina's forces um, over uh, the Dinara mountain towards Knin. Otrich is highlighted in yellow and General Markac's forces are attacking from the Velebit mountain range, um, heading, trying to break through at a place called Mali Alan to break through there and then move towards Gracchats. Now, what both the Serb military and the Croatian army knew was that if Otrich falls to General Gotovina's and General Marikac's forces, then the whole... So at 0500 on the 4th of August, 1995, Croatian forces commenced their attack to retake the so-called Krajina by launching an artillery attack on military objects intending to disrupt command, control, and communication of Krajina Serb forces. The initial assault on Knin lasted approximately 45 minutes. Krajina Serb military intelligence reports from inside Knin on that morning confirmed that the Croatian army was targeting military objectives, not civilians. It is important to note that there are no known victims of shelling in Knin during Operation Storm. No dead and no injured. By 10 a.m. on the 4th of August, Croatian artillery continued to pound Serb positions on their defense lines on the Dinara mountain. And by 10 a.m. on the 4th of August, the police units defending their positions started to retreat. But the 7th Knin Corps tried to hold Serb positions on the Dinara. This is a report of the uh, Serb general of the 7th Knin Corps, General Slobodan Kovacevic who reported that, quote, already at around 1000 hours on the 4th of August, the forces of the police battalion that were holding the positions on the Dinara mountain started retreating in an organized manner, which resulted in the retreat of the remaining units of the 7th Corps. Although the 7th Corps tried to further retain the positions at the Dinara due to the weak entrenchment and suppression and the horrible pressure on the unaccustomed soldiers imposed by the Ustasha artillery, the dominant positions were abandoned and only parts of the units occupied in a disorganized manner the unprepared positions in the depth of the Axis Igla Srebrenica Zemlya Knin. Now, while fighting was going on up in the Dinara mountain, the situation in Knin was still quite calm amongst the civilian population. At 14.15 or 2.15 p.m. on the 4th of August, 1995, the UN spokesman in Knin, Alan Roberts, appeared live on CNN and reported that, quote, there is no panic in Knin and that, quote, it is rather calm, but people are rather concerned about what may follow next. It is clear that the morning shelling in and around Knin had not caused panic among the civilian population in Knin. Now, we also have the benefit of seeing the reports that were being issued by the Krajina Serb military to um, its superiors in Belgrade. And this is a report issued at 14.30, meaning 2.30 p.m. on the 4th of August, 1995, by General Mrkšić to General Perišić in Belgrade, reporting that the Croatian army has made a breach of Serb defense lines in the Dinara mountain at Srebrenica Zemlya. He reported, quote, the enemy is conducting a forceful attack from Gra Grahovo over Dinara and towards Srebrenica Zemlya. By 1430 hours, they succeeded to make a breach towards Srebrenica Zemlya. 
there is danger that the defense of Knin might be jeopardized from the heading of Tsarvena Zemya. At 1500, or 3 p.m. on the 4th of August, General Mrkšić is interviewed on Radio Belgrade and reports that the Ukraina Serb army was still, quote, firmly in control of the forward line, front line. The Croatian army was unable to seriously breach our lines, except on the route leading from Grahovo via Crvena Zemlja to Knin. Mrkšić was correct. The Croatian army had made very little progress on the front lines, and the breach on the Dinara mountain was the only threat because it had come as a surprise attack. And this slide shows just how right General Mrkšić was. The Croatian army had not made much progress anywhere in the so-called Krajina after the first day of Operation Storm, other than, as you can see in the two boxes, the breakthrough by General Gotovina's forces uh, at the Dinara Mountain, and the other box is where, um, as you will see in a minute, uh, the breakthrough started to happen by General Markac's special police forces on the Velebit. At 1600 hours on the 4th of August, or 4 p.m., Krajina Serb intelligence reports to Belgrade that the Croatian army had taken over the dominant peaks on the Dinara and was poised to break into the vicinity of Knin. They also reported that the Croatian special police under General Markac's command were starting to breach Serb lines at the Velebit mountain and that Gračac was potentially in danger. I quote from the report, on the axis Grahovo Crvena Zemlja Knin, the Ustasha have succeeded in taking over the dominant peaks and creating favorable conditions for the continuation of their activities and breaking out into the immediate vicinity of Knin. So as of 1600 hours, 4 p.m. on the 4th of August, the Serb leadership in Knin was now facing a scenario where General Gotovina's forces and General Marikac's forces might link at Otric and encircle them if the Serb forces could not hold off General Marikac's special police forces on the Velebit mountain. Also at 4 p.m., General Mladic informed Martic and Mrkšić that he will be unable to mount a counterattack against General Gotovina's forces the next day because he cannot move his forces from eastern Bosnia in time. And you can see on this map, again, the threat of encirclement uh, that at Otric, that was um, now a very real threat because of the breakthroughs by General Gotovina and General Marakac. At 16.30 or 4.30 p.m. on the 4th of August, faced with the immediate threat that the HV would move on Knin and they, they would face encirclement at Otric, Milan Martic and General Mrkšić call the so-called RSK Prime Minister, Milan Babic, in Belgrade and agree to evacuate the civilians and Knin. And this is um, a transcript of their phone conversation, which was recorded at uh, 1630, which is uh, in the circle um, in the slide on your screen. And the conversation says, should I go down there to Knin, do something to make this stop? That's what um, Mirkšić is telling Babic in Belgrade. And Babic responds, listen, there is nothing that can be done. Pull the people out of there. And Mrkšić responds, all right, we are starting to do that. And then in the box, the conversation continues on. Milan, meaning Milan Babic, from, uh, is being spoken to. From the Supreme Council of Defense, only the general and I, meaning uh, I, Milan Martic, are here. So we are thinking of extracting the women and children. And Bubbage responds, there is no other option. I talked to Galbraith an hour ago. Judging from what he said, I don't think they'll stop. Conduct every action as planned. And the answer is, so that means that we're extracting, does it? So the decision is made amongst President, so-called President Martic, so-called Prime Minister Bubbage, and General Mrkšić to order the evacuation of Serb civilians from the southern part of the so-called Krajina. General Mrkšić admitted that the fear of encirclement at Otric triggered the decision to evacuate the Krajina Serb population. What I'm asking you is, agreed, the, the Strmica-Grahovo uh, road, had been, you had been cut off there, 
And is your testimony then that yes. if you had to do an evacuation out of Knin, you would have had to go up that road from Knin to Otrich and then from Otrich to Serb to your reserve command post? Is that it? Yes. Okay. Now. Uh, oh, no. Yes. It was the Supreme Council that issued, uh, made a decision and an order was issued. I think you have it there. That was the only solution that we were left with. Or to fight in an encirclement at the cost of many human lives, or to evacuate to the territory from Otrich to Serb that was under the control of uh, the RSK army. Let me, while we're on this topic, let me jump ahead. At 1645, Colonel Kosta Novakovic, assistant to the commander of the RSK Army main staff, was called to a meeting by General Murkšić to discuss, quote, what to do with the civilian population, close quote. Novakovic was told to draft the order to evacuate the civilian population of the southern Krajina. He testified in his own words about that meeting. For those of you that don't understand Serbian and wish to skip ahead to the English translation, you can skip ahead about 4 minutes and 38 seconds in this video. Znači, mene je negdje oko 16.40 u 30 časova pozvao general Mršić. Pitao me šta radim, da ja sad to ne prepričam. I rekao, daj ti dođi da se dogovorimo, da vidimo zapravo. Moramo vidjeti šta ćemo sa stanovništvom, jer je stanovništvo ugroženo. Kod mene je u kancelariji predsjednik Martić, tu je general Lončar, načelnih štaba, tu je, još je rekao ja od ministara, ja sad ne mogu sjeti se koji je bio, ali dolazi ministar Kovačević koji je ministar informisanja i kada načelnik Nina. I treba da vidimo šta ćemo dalje raditi. I ja sam bio u kancelariji, znači, već za dva, tri minuta. Kad sam došao u kancelariju Mršiću, upravo kod Mršića, generala, tu su bilo ove ljudi koje se ja napomenuo. I onda je Mršić ukratko iznio situaciju. Doslovno je rekao, predsjednik Marć je razgovarao sa premijerom Babićem koji se nalazi u Beogradu. Babić, kao što znamo, bio je na sastanku sa ambasadorom SAD, gospodinom Peterom Galbraithom. I mislim da Hrvatska neće stati. Sljedeće, predsjednik Marć je razgovarao sa Beoradom i sa Palama. Ja predpostavljam, nije se izjasnio, a predpostavljam sa Miloševićem i sa Karadžićem. Sad ja to predpostavljam, a vjerojatno je tako tačno. Konsultao sam ministra odbrane i ministra unutrašnjih poslova, jer su oni, pored presjednika Martića i pored konanta, članovi, znači, vrhov sad odbrane. I kažem, mi smo odlučili da trebamo ojakujstati stavništvo iz Dalmacije Znači, to su opštine Knin, Benkovac, Obrovac, Drniš i iz opštine Gračac u Lici. E zbog čega to nisam završio ovu priču? Zato što je postala opasnost da se praktično preko malog alana presjeće taj put koji je jedini put koji vodi ka unutrašnjosti, put preko Otrića, preko Gračaca. Znači, Dalmacija i stanovništvo i vojska bila u jednom okruženju. Sada ja ne bih htio da zlopotrebljam vreme. Ako bude trebalo, mogu kasnije objasniti. A mi znamo kako su srpske jedinice i srpsko stanovništvo završali kad su bile u okruženju. I da se sad vratim na samu odluku. Meni je rečeno da ja dobio sam znači da se stanovništvo treba iseliti, odnosno preseliti, da se razmisli u Otrići i Srbi.
preko otiće zapravo srbi lapac i da ja napišem, napišem takvu odluku. Nisu mi puno objašnjavali, ali su rekli također da vidim ja sa komandom uprofora, pošto je to moj sektor posla, da vidim s njima mogu li se oni angažovati. I ja sam očio u suđenu kancelariju, napravio sam ovu odluku, tu sam, vidite koliko tu je od 16.45 do 17.20, znači do 17.10 dok sam ja tamo, to mi je trebalo, znači, skoro 20 minuta, pola sata. Zašto sam ja to sam kuću? Kucao sam sam zato da ne bi to neko sa strane kucao daktilograf ili neko da se ne napravi neka uzbuna u komandi, tako. Je to bilo ipak diskretno, samo sa par ljudi. Tu sam ja napravio neke greške na mašini, ali to sad nije bitno, bila je mašina. Električno ja sam kucao sa ovom, do tada sam, ono, kako se zove, mehaničko. I oni su to, sad, ja sam to donio i prećnik je to potpisao. This is the English translation of the testimony of Colonel Novaković concerning the meeting at 16.45 or 4.45 p.m. on the 4th of August, where the Krajina Serb leadership decided to evacuate the civilian population from the southern part of the so-called Krajina. If you wish to skip the English translation, you can skip ahead in this video by 4 minutes and 57 seconds. Let me take you back to, uh, to D-137, the decision, uh, and you said you authored it. Uh, was that on your own initiative, or did someone ask you to prepare this? I was just about to come to that point. At 16, uh, 30 hours, uh, General Mukšić summoned me and asked me what I was doing. He told me, why don't you come over so that we could see what we are going to do with the population since it's at risk. President Martić was in my office, General Lonchard, the chief of staff, was there. He said uh, also that there was one of the ministers there with him. And then Minister Kovacevic, the Minister of Information and uh, Knin Mayor, arrived. And he said, oh, and we have to see what we were going to do next. I reached his office uh, in less than two to three minutes. As I got stepped into Mr. Mertrich's office, General Mertrich's office, I already found all the individuals I mentioned uh, there. Mr. Mertrich then um, uh, briefed us on the situation and said literally, President Martic spoke with Prime Minister Babic, who is in Belgrade, Babic, Babic as we all know, attended the meeting with uh, the U.S. Ambassador Peter Galbraith. And I think that Croatia will not stop. President Martic spoke with Belgrade and Pale. My presumption was, although he didn't say that uh, in so many words, that he spoke with uh, Milosevic and Karadzic. I consulted minister, uh, the, the defense minister and the minister of the interior because they, in addition to President Martic and commander, were uh, members of the uh, Supreme Defense Council. And he said, we decided that we ought to evacuate the population out of Dalmatia. Knin, Benkovac, Obrovac and Drniš were the municipalities involved and out of the Gračas municipality in Lika. Now why? I didn't finish the story. Because there was the danger that practically across Mali Alan the route would be cut off which was the only route uh, leading toward the hinterland via Otocas. Dalme uh, in Dalmatia, the army and the entire population would um, f find themselves encircled. I do not wish to 
abuse your time if need be I can explain later on but we know how the Serbian units and Serbian population uh, um, what sort of end they met and what their fate was when they found themselves in encirclement. Let me go back to this decision. I was told that the population should move out or relocate to Otrich and Serb, or rather via Otrich, Serb and Lapas, and that I should write a decision to that effect. They didn't explain this to me in great deal, but they told me to see with the Amprofor command, since this was my part of the job, to, uh, whether they could get involved in this. I went back into my office. I drafted this decision, and you can see that it was done in 1645 uh, until 1710. So it took me some 20 minutes, half an hour. Why did I type this out on my own? Well, in order to make sure that uh, 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 typists typing it up uh, uh, would not wreak havoc uh, uh, and uh, that's why I did it on myself and that's why you have some typos there. I used an electrical typewriter. No, I used a mechanical typewriter. I... Uh, brought it over so, and the president signed it. Several minutes later at 17.10 or 5.10 p.m. on the 4th of August, the so-called president of the Republic of Serbia and Krajina, Milan Martic, signed the order to evacuate the civilian population. And the main staff of the Army of the Republika, Republic of Serbia and Krajina certified the order at 17.20. Referring to the danger of encirclement at Otrich, Martic's order states that it is being issued because, quote, a large part of the territory of northern Dalmatia and part of Lika have become threatened. Forty minutes after the army certified the evacuation order, at 1800 or 6 p.m. on the 4th of August, Colonel Novakovic from the Krajina Serb army meets with UN officials in Knin and asks, asks for fuel to move 32,000 people from Drniš, Benkovac, Obrovac, Knin and Gračac to Petrovac and Banja Luka in Bosnia. And you have that uh, highlighted in the red boxes. This is a, um, a, a UN document recording what was discussed at the meeting. And you can see that the intention of the Krajina Serb authorities was to gather enough fuel to move the Serb population to Bosnia. The reality was that once uh, they were moving a population in this large numbers, meaning uh, by their own estimates 32,000 people, they had to move them to Bosnia because the only places where there was sufficient, sufficient logistics to house uh, and feed and shelter 32,000 people uh, was in Bosanski Petrovac and ultimately in Banja Luka in Bosnia. Also at 1800 or at 6 p.m., the evacuation order is broadcast on local Serb radio, and by 2000 or 8 p.m., the evacuation of the southern part of the so called Krajina is fully underway. Now recall that Knin is in a valley, and on the eastern side of Knin is the Dinara mountain. On the western side is an elevation known as Bulina Strana. At 2000 or 8 p.m. on the 4th, uh, Mrkšić was evacuating the civilian population, but still planned to mount a defense of Knin by withdrawing from the town in the valley and taking up positions on the elevations on the western side of the town at Bulina Strana. He attempted to reorganize his troops in order to mount a decisive defense, but the evacuation order caused his soldiers to flee with their families towards Bosnia, and he could never reorganize his troops in the southern part of the Krajina. So again, if we look at a map of the um, 
status of forces at the end of the first day of Operation Storm. The Kayana Serb defense is held strong, as you can see. Um, but the breaches by the forces of General Gotovina and General Markac threatened the capital of Kanin and caused Serb leaders to evacuate the civilian population from the southern Kraina. Although they hoped to move the civilian population from the southern Kraina to Bosnia, they intended to get their military forces behind Otrich, in other words, above that yellow circle, and to then uh, reestablish a front line there in order to defend the rest of the uh, so-called Kanaina from behind that um, new defense line, which would be established um, at Otrich. However, as I indicated, um, the chaos created by the decision uh, to evacuate the civilian population caused many of the soldiers to choose to um, be with their families and to take care of their families rather than um, maintain military discipline and to stay with their units. The next day, on the 5th of August, 1995, at 9.45 a.m., the Croatian army enters and seizes Knin, taking the Krajina Serb capital and, uh, to use the expression, cutting off the head of the snake. As you can see on this map of the situation at that time, the Krajina Serb forces otherwise were still holding quite firm. By the end of the second day of Operation Storm, on the 5th of August, 1995, the Croatian army is starting to make more advances now that the Krajina Serb leadership is in disarray with the loss of their capital and the desertion by many of their soldiers due to the loss of morale and desire to flee with their families. Sector North is still holding strong, however, as you can see in the northern part uh, of this map. Um, the Serb defenses in the north are still quite solid. By the end of the third day of Operation Storm, the, in other words, by the end of 6 August 1995, the Croatian army is now making significant advances and the outcome is now certain. You can see that on the map, the blue areas are now the areas that the Croatian army is taking and the uh, reddish pink areas are uh, decreasing in size on the map. As happened in Western Slavonia in May 1995, and as happened in the southern part of the Krajina on the first day of Operation Storm, uh, as the uh, soldiers uh, started to retreat, uh, the civilian population moved with them. And on the 6th of August, that is the third day, President Tujman comes to Knin and visits the Knin Fortress. Um, this sent the message to the holdout Serb forces in the north that the Krajina uh, had fallen and that their efforts uh, to defend it are now hopeless. On the 8th of August, 1995, the last of the uh, Krajina troops holding out in sector north surrender to the Croatian army commander in the north, General Petar Stipetic. Operation Storm is completed on this day and Croatia has restored its sovereignty over most of its territory. As an epilogue, on the 12th of August, 1995, General Mladic was finally able to transfer his troops from Eastern to Western Bo Bosnia and launched his counterattack against General Gotovina's forces near Grahovo, killing 12 Croatian army soldiers. Croatian leaders at the Brioni meeting had correctly concluded that they only had a short window of opportunity to, con to conduct Operation Storm before Mladic would be in a position to counterattack against General Gotovina's forces in Bosnia. On the 14th of August, 1995, uh, Sloboda Milosevic, the president of Serbia, convened a meeting of his Supreme Defense Council of Yugoslavia in Belgrade. Um, and in this secret meeting discussed the events uh, of Operation Storm. He unequivocally in the transcript of that meeting blames the leadership of the so-called Krajina Serbs for ordering the evacuation. And in the red box, you can see he says, quote, the question is 
who made the decision for the Kraina serve leader uh, for the Kraina leadership to leave Kraina. A decision was made which caused the exodus, and it was made in a situation when they had all the conditions provided for their defense. And so you can see that uh, Milosevic unquestionably, uh, in a secret meeting with his Supreme Defense Council, placed all of the blame on the Kaina Serb leadership. Um, it turned out that he's right, that um, the Kaina Serb army did in fact have very hard and firm uh, defensive positions. They were essentially ready to defend against the Croatian army attack. They had uh, correctly anticipated what the planned uh, directions of attack were by the Croatian army. And it was only um, the surprise of General Gotovina's attack over the Dinara uh, mountains on the uh, 4th of August with two guards brigades that upset uh, the Kraina Serb defense plans and uh, essentially caused them to make decisions um, that they were that had not planned to take, um, meaning uh, they were surprised to have Knin threatened so quickly on the first day of Operation Storm. And that surprise um, and the fear of being encircled uh, at Otrich led them to order an evacuation of the population, which ultimately um, destroyed the morale of their army and um, led to the quick uh, victory of the Croatian army in Operation Storm. So to conclude, uh, the Krajina Serb army was ready for the Croatian army's attack because their intelligence had anticipated the Croatian plans for Operation Storm. General Gotovina surprised the Krajina Serb army by changing course the day before Operation Storm and by deciding to deploy two brigades to take Kanin immediately in a surprise attack over the Dinara mountain. When the Croatian army launched Operation Storm, the Krajina Serb army's lines held strong in most of the so-called Krajina, but the surprise of General Gotovina's attack caught the Krajina Serbs unprepared and General Gotovina's forces were able to breach the Serb defenses and put Knin in immediate danger by 3 p.m. on the first day of storm. When General Marakac's forces on the Velebit began to create a second breach, which would cause Serbs to uh, be encircled in the southern part of the Krajina at a place called Otrich, Serb leaders ordered an evacuation of their population to Bosnia. This evacuation decision caused panic among civilians and destroyed the morale of the Krajina Serb soldiers many of whom chose to flee with their families to Bosnia. The evacuation enabled the Croatian army to win in Operation Storm. Finally, Croatia did not expel the Kaina Serb population, as I've demonstrated in this PowerPoint slide. Hopefully, um, with these facts, it will put to rest um, some of the myths about um, what happened in Operation Storm. It was not an easy victory for the Croatian army. Um, there was no uh, use of force to expel the Serb population from Croatia. Um, there was significant um, strategy involved. There was some good fortune involved and ultimately the responsibility for the departure of the Krajina Serb population rests with the leadership of the so-called um, Republika Srpska Krajina, or the so-called Republic of Serbian Krajina. Hope you, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this presentation and have learned something new um, about the events of Operation Storm.